people will simply say that when you're in ketosis, you're burning fat for fuel. Okay, that's an overgeneralization, but to some degree it is true. We are utilizing fats, but I wanna give you a really clear breakdown between what fat burning is, fatty acid oxidation, and what creating ketones are and burning ketones for fuel. Okay, they're slightly different, but when you're in ketosis, you can utilize both. So you're gonna get basically a fat loss crash course, okay? So let's go ahead and break it all down and I'm gonna give you a really cool analogy. So just when this video starts to get a little complex, I'm gonna bring it back down to earth with an epic analogy that's gonna change the way you look at fat metabolism forever. Hey, we have new videos almost every single day at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. So please, I ask you to hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss out. And then also hit that bell icon so you can turn on notifications. I also want you to check out Boo Foods. Okay, these guys, are great. I met them when I was at KetoCon in Austin, Texas, and what attracted me to them was the fact that they've created keto treats that are legitimately clean. Okay, they've made these keto bites that are now available at Whole Foods, so you can go to Whole Foods and check them out. There's awesome little keto treats that are sweetened with organic monk fruit, so no sugar alcohols at all, and then they're put together with pea protein, just really good sustainable ingredients, so super clean keto snack. They also have some cookie dough, they have some amazing stuff, but the keto bites are something that, honestly, you can munch on all the time. They're not gonna bloat you, they're not gonna give you that upset stomach, and the cool thing is you can get them down at the link below, or you can check them out at Whole Foods. So big thank you to Boo Foods for making this video possible and for making keto tasty again. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about what fat burning is. Okay, so fat is stored in what's called adipocytes. Okay, we have, or adipocytes, depending on if you're a potato, potato kind of guy. Basically, we have little cells within our body that is our adipose tissue. It's our fat tissue. And fatty acids live inside those little pockets. That's why if you were to kind of squeeze your belly fat, you can almost feel little pods, right? Like little seeds. Those are the cells in which fatty acids live in, and they get bigger and they get smaller. So what ends up happening is when we start the process of fatty acid oxidation, or fat burning, the fat is liberated from its little house, and it goes into the bloodstream, and then it reaches the cell that needs it. Most of the time, it's a muscle cell. Once it hits the cell, it goes to the mitochondria, which is a word we hear all the time nowadays, right? The mitochondria, the energy powerhouse of the cell. What happens is the fatty acid that left the fat cell now goes through the mitochondrial membrane and into what's called the mitochondrial matrix. This mitochondrial matrix is where fat burning really occurs, okay? This is where beta oxidation or fatty acid oxidation occurs. Now we break it down into step two. This is where things get a little bit more complicated, but again, it'll all make sense. Just stick with me, I promise. Okay, beta oxidation or fatty acid oxidation is now occurring when carbon molecules are getting chopped off of the fatty acid chain. So a fatty acid chain can be a number of carbon molecules. Like for example, MCTs are gonna be eight carbon chains, right? So in the process of fatty acid oxidation, chunks are getting chopped off. Okay, so two carbon acetyl coenzyme A molecules are chopped off at a time. So in the case of MCT oil, it's eight carbon chains. So two, chop, four, chop, six, chop, eight, chop, okay? And this progressively happens until the fatty acid chain is all gone, just like that, right? Okay, now as a byproduct, we have something called NADH and FADH, okay, which supports the electron transport chain. I'll talk about that in a second. But through this process, we're liberating one acetyl coenzyme A and we're liberating NADH and FADH. The long and the short of it is, basically we have an ax that's chopping up the fatty acid chain into a different energy molecule, okay? Then this step three, that acetyl coenzyme A that we liberated from the chopping process goes into the Krebs cycle. Remember the Krebs cycle from biology class? It's just simply where we create energy. Now, when it goes through the Krebs cycle, it gets converted into CO2, okay? It's a perfect indicator. When it gets converted into CO2, that's how we know we're burning fat. It's the end of the process. So when you are working out, when you're pushing it and you're exhaling a lot because you're breathing a lot, it's an indicator that you're burning more fat. Every time you exhale, you're expelling CO2, which is a byproduct of the Krebs cycle, whether it's fat or carbohydrate metabolism. Now, when you start having that respiratory rate increase because you're working out, that's more fatty acid oxidation. That's more just Krebs cycle that's going on because you're moving faster. Now, the Krebs cycle is the same, whether it's going to be for fats, whether it's going to be for proteins, carbs, ketones, okay? It's the end of the line, ultimately, where we create energy, okay? Now, 
The NADH and FADH is a little bit more complicated. All that does is contribute to what's called the electron transport chain, which creates adenosine triphosphate, creates energy. Let's not really worry about that right now. So what is the difference between fat burning and fat oxidation? Quite honestly, they're kind of the same. Fat burning is more so a colloquialism. So it's just a simplification of kind of a, just a non-scientific term, right? Well, we could break it down a little bit more. I think fat burning talks to the whole process, liberating fats from the tissue, putting them into the bloodstream, going into the cell, going into the mitochondria, the chopping process, the whole beta oxidation process. And then of course the Krebs cycle, that's the whole process of fat burning. I feel like fatty acid oxidation is more so limited to just like what's going on in the mitochondrial matrix. So fat burning is a generalization for all of this happening. Now here's a really cool analogy. It's gonna make it all make sense. Let's look at fat burning or fat oxidation in the sense of a forest all the way down to a campfire. Your fat cells, the fat throughout your body, is your forest. You have a forest of logs, the potential logs, a forest. What happens is the next phase, the fatty acids that are broken down from the stored form of fats are big logs. So the forest has been chopped down, but now you've got big logs that are going on a tractor trailer. Okay, that is your fatty acid, okay, the logs. Then the logs get delivered to the campsite. Okay, there are basically logs going to the campsite to the campfire. This campfire is the mitochondria, the muscle cell. It's the site at which energy is going to be made. So the logs are now getting delivered, okay? Next up, we have beta oxidation. That is the ax. Okay, the beta oxidation is the process of taking these logs and chopping them into smaller logs. The smaller logs that it gets chopped into is gonna be acetyl coenzyme A, the byproduct of beta oxidation. So now we've taken logs through beta oxidation, the ax, we have now chopped the logs into acetyl coenzyme A. That acetyl coenzyme A is now firewood, which now gets thrown onto the fire which is the Krebs cycle, creating energy. So it's now burning, and we now have energy. Now, for those of you that are science nerds, the NADH and the FADH that I was talking about, think of those as little scraps of wood that were a byproduct of the chopping that you can throw on the fire to get a little like sizzle, a little spark, a little extra energy, okay? Now, I promised you I would explain the difference between ketone generation. This is where things get really interesting, because ketones and how they create energy are slightly different than how we just take direct fat for energy. Okay, ketones create energy in a different way. We still have the forest of fat. I want a shirt that says that. The forest of fat, okay? We still have the logging process. The trees are still chopped down and they're chopped down into fatty acids. But here's where it's different. Instead of the logs getting driven to the campsite, the logs get driven to the liver. And the liver ends up acting as the ax, ketogenesis takes those fatty acids and turns them into ketones, okay? And those ketones go to a different place. Those ketones go to, I want you to think of it like this. Instead of a campsite, let's think of a fireplace, okay? In order to get firewood into your home to put into the fireplace, it needs to be in pretty small chunks. You can't deliver a big log to, in through your front door like you could deliver a log to a campground. So what happens is you require the liver the ax, ketogenesis, to chop the logs into small pieces so that you can get them into your house. The blood-brain barrier is like the front door of your house, right? So it's like in order for ketones to get into your brain, they have to be small enough to be able to fit through the front door. So normal fats don't affect the brain. They don't get into the brain, whereas ketones do because they're chopped up small enough by the ax, the lumberjack, the liver, you see, it all makes sense. So ketones are a different world. Do we still liberate fat first? Yes. So for those people out there that say, hey, your marketing gimmicks by saying fat for fuel is a total joke, it's not a total joke. The first part is absolutely true and it just does something different. And the cool thing is, is when you're in ketosis, you have both occurring. You create ketones, but your muscle cells still go through beta oxidation too. You don't just strictly go through ketogenesis. Ketogenesis occurs for the ketones that are needed for different cells and fatty acids are still utilized by the muscle cell.
So now you know how this works. No more saying that fat metabolism isn't cool because honestly, we just made it cool. So at the end of it all, we have to give credit where credit's due. Okay, fatty acid metabolism and keto metabolism are two very distinct things that are very powerful within the body, but it all comes down to burning fat. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.